Hello again, I am Blunty, and if you've popped into my channel before on matters of PC gaming and graphics cards, chances are you already suspect that one of my very favourite things about NVIDIA's cards, my personal preference, is the recording functionality. And in the GeForce Experience Beta, what was once a straightforward game recording function which went by the name of Shadow Play, is now spreading its wings and becoming a full-fledged suite of recording, game sharing, screenshotting, time travelling, loop recording and even Twitch and YouTube broadcasting tools and with some basic editing tools and direct uploading built in there as well. Now, I've spoken about this on video before, but since the last time I did so, things have gotten even fancier and the number of features has swelled nicely. It is a beta, it's still growing and everything, it's lovely. So I figured it was a good time to look at it again. And also, I want to address the point I keep making about all this delicious recording and streaming goodness coming to you without kicking the heck out of your gaming performance. So, I'll be doing some side-by-side -side comparisons with Fraps and OBS recording as well. And I'll be doing all the demos for this video on my little Anvil mini gaming rig packing an i3 CPU and the Asus Strix GeForce GTX 950 card that was the subject of yesterday's video full of gameplay and overclocking goodness. And I'm also giving the card away, so if you haven't seen that video, check it out. And also the video that will follow up this one for all you need to know about how to be in for a chance to win it. But, back to the point of this video, the GeForce Share Beta currently looks like this when you hit the shortcut key to bring it up over your game. By default, the shortcut is Alt-Z, by the way, you can always change that to whatever you want if that doesn't suit you. The first few features haven't changed much, I've spoken about them before on video and at NFAN events actually, so we'll skip over the top of those. But, on some of the sweet changes recently introduced into the beta, include new stuff in the broadcast section, which is where the Twitch and YouTube live streaming features live, and the coolest new trick is the ability to use a custom overlay graphic so you can pop up your own personal branding and frame your face cam for a bit of extra pro polish and pizzazz. And the best part is it's nothing more than a PNG graphics file, so it's easy to make one in almost any image editing tool you prefer. And basically any space you leave transparent in that image will of course be where the game shows through for your stream audience. And only the audience sees it by the way, so you can keep playing without the overlay getting in your way of any vital on-screen things in the game. You can also now take control over your microphone levels, and this is true for the broadcast and local recording features too. This feature is very welcome. I personally asked for this feature. <laughs> it makes life so much easier for doing quick, fuss-free live commentary recordings. Also new to the beta, all the settings and things for the overlays, your camera, where the camera is, the size, and all of that kind of stuff is now in the main overlay itself, so you no longer have to drop back out to the GeForce Experience main window software thingy to get that done. That makes life so much quicker and easier and lovely as well, being able to change all the important things from this overlay that just pops over your game. It's lovely. But yeah, going live on Twitch or YouTube is literally a single button combo away. You don't even need to pause your game, much less alt-tab away from it to fiddle with another program. It's also bewilderingly easy now to dip your toes into the fun of live streaming. And now onto those recording demos. I've said it many times now, but I'm going to show you the performance impact, or rather lack of performance impact, while recording with the GeForce Share recording feature. A bit of a side-by-side -side here to make it really easy for you. On the left is gameplay recorded using a capture card installed in my main rig, so therefore eliminating all possible impact on frame rate of the game from the recording. And on the right is gameplay recorded simply using the GeForce Share experience recording feature, and the file has even been written to the same hard drive the game is running from, just to really jam home the point even more so about how light-footed NVIDIA's built-in recording really is. And you can see for yourself, there is no appreciable impact on game performance using the GeForce Share recording. Both sessions are varying happily between 50 and 80 FPS. There's no stutter, no hitching. Now we'll compare that with two of the most popular ways to record gameplay on the same machine you're playing on. Fraps, which I myself used to use once upon a time. It's been around forever and it's nice and reliable and the recordings are nice and clean and pretty much everyone who's ever used it will recommend it to you as a good bit of software. But... As you can see, it doesn't come without compromises. It's more than a bit heavy-footed on the system's performance. It knocks your frame rate about. 
And OBS is a similar story. It's slightly kinder, but like Fraps, it soaks up CPU time to do its thing, and both have very noticeable impacts on the frame rate. They're not just causing huge frame drops, but they're causing a bit of stuttering too. And now's a good time to remind you, all of this is happening where I've basically got no CPU and GPU overhead to spare. Little Anvil is a beast of a machine considering its size and budget-friendly parts, but this isn't a super-duper heavyweight gaming rig system. This is an Asus Strix GeForce GTX 950 paired up with a Mega Skylake i3-6100 CPU. And while it holds its own surprisingly well on a lot of games, it's not too hard to start bouncing off those walls when you want to do more than just play the game. Now, if you're on a big boy system with more overhead room, maybe OBS or Fraps could be used without murdering the frame rate into almost unplayable neighborhoods, but still, even if your system could cope with Fraps or OBS doing the recording while you're playing, why would you even want to when the built-in recording system doesn't touch the frame rate at all? And add to that the fact that starting a recording is easier, it's faster, it can be used as a literal flip of a switch without any setup or prep or loading up any extra programs. To me, it's a no-brainer. To you, it should be a no-brainer too. It seems obvious, doesn't it? If you want to record PC gameplay and you don't have the resources or don't want the complexity of having a whole second machine to record using an external capture device or a PCI capture card like the Elgato HD60 Pro that I use for console recording, NVIDIA's GeForce Experience recording feature is solid gold. It is invaluable. In fact, almost every last frame of all PC gameplay you see in any of my videos recently is recorded this way. It's crisp, clean, easy, performance hit free, and super simple. I just hit the button whenever I need to record some footage and it kind of just gets done. Shadowplay has grown up a lot from its, hey, that's a pretty neat feature kind of days. Now it is something that's become vital and essential to my workflow, and I swear by it happily, it has never let me down. It's always been flawless. And I feel like I should touch wood when I say that. It feels like I'm tempting fate, but yeah, it has never ever let me down. Flawless from day one, it's been wonderful. All that, and it works flawlessly on even the baby brother of the GTX 900 line, the 950. And on that note, a reminder to check out that video all about the Asus Strix card that I've been using here, and keep an eye out, make sure that sub button is your friend, so you don't miss out on the chance to win this card real soon now. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, I hope you got something useful out of this video, but I will catch you next time.